What is up, morning sconers? Glad to have you back here. A lot to do today, of course. Uh, LSU baseball gets a win over McNeese. And I want to talk about gambling for all of you degenerates who love to gamble. Good news in the state of Louisiana we'll talk about coming up here in just a second. As always, we're brought to you by Get Signed. Digital autograph app for your smartphone, G-E-T-S-Y-N-D. Download it in your App Store or Google Play. Your boy would be very grateful. Let me start with LSU baseball. They beat McNeese uh, last night 13-3. to A couple of observations. Uh, first and foremost, of course, if you're LSU and you're still technically vying for your tournament life, um, you want to win games. So you know, a loss to McNeese would have been costly in the RPI. Uh I still believe you take care of business the next two weekends in conference play and you're in. You get the 15 conference wins, it doesn't matter, but clearly it'd be a, a bad look if nothing else. Um, so they won the game, uh, which first and foremost was, was a good thing. Uh, th- there's actually so much from last night that I want to talk about. Uh, so let me just go sequentially. Caleb Gilbert got the start and that did not go well. Gilbert didn't even make it out of the second. He allowed five runs, uh, sorry, three runs on five hits. He walked two, which was uncharacteristic for Gilbert, but he did get three strikeouts. He actually struck out the guy to uh, Shane Selman to open the game. Um, this is the really difficult part with Gilbert because this was his first start since the Texas A&M series when he didn't make it out of the first, if you remember. That's whenever they they shifted the whole rotation and they moved Mikhail Hilliard to Saturday. Um, and they tried a lot of different things on Sunday, and we've seen Gilbert go long relief and actually have success. He did that against Ole Miss. And um, when you know Peters, uh, Peters couldn't make it out of the first or out of the second, then went to Gilbert, and he gave him like four, four, four innings of relief. They tried to stretch him into the fifth inning, but a fifth inning of relief. But I, so as Palmineri and Alan Dunn right now are trying to define roles, I think what you've seen right here is that Caleb Gilbert is not going to be a starter for you. Uh, you just can't count on him to give him the ball. And the tough part about that for LSU is you know in the SEC tournament or if you play into the loser's bracket or, you know, fingers crossed, if you make it to Omaha, you're going to need a fourth starting pitcher at some point. You know you've got your, well, you know you've got Hess and Hilliard. And you feel pretty good now about Labus. He was really good last week against Arkansas, his last, the previous outing through the complete game shutout in the midweek against Louisiana Tech. So you feel good about those three and you're waiting for another. It's very clear at this point that Peterson is going to be better in the bullpen, late inning, closer, setup man type role than a starter. He just can't do it. And unfortunately, it looks like that's the same for Gilbert. He's probably going to be better in some kind of a long relief role than in as a, clearly as a starter. And they tried to use him as a setup man this weekend. And Peterson had to come save the day, inheriting a, a 2-0 count with two men on base. So that's disappointing. I was really hoping that you would have gotten better from Gilbert. Um, you know, he gives up two. The game started. He he had two outs in the first, and he gives up a two-run double. So LSU's in a 2-0 hole. LSU comes back and gets three in the bottom of the first. And Gilbert turns around and gives it right back in the top of the second. And at that point, they brought in Trent Vetmeyer. Uh, who was was good. Vetmeyer gave you an inning in the third, only faced one over the minimum. He gave up one hit. I think it was actually the leadoff guy he faced. But um, no, it, no, it wasn't. Forgive me, because he got out of the second but um, uh, without giving up any more runs. So um, it, Gilbert, you got to watch. I mean, it's it's. I know this has been a season-long struggle, but they're trying to find a role for him, and they're, they're still looking at this point. Um, Nick Storrs pitched two innings, and his line looks really good. Uh, two innings pitched, he allowed just one hit. He did walk two, but he struck out two as well. And at one point in his second inning of work, Alan Dunn came out to talk to him. And after the game, he said, look, if you walk anybody else, uh, you're coming out. And there were two men on base, and he came back and got a strikeout. So the command wasn't good, but he was 91-93, to 93, and you know he can touch 94-95. So it's kind of what you were hoping for from Nick Storrs. And most importantly is that he was able to extra- stretch to 33 pitches, uh, in the outing last night. And so you kind of fingers crossed that he wakes up today and he's not sore because if that's the case, then that's a guy that you can go get in the bullpen. I mean, let's say you got let's say you got second and third with one out and you need you need to go get a strikeout. Like Storrs is a guy that you probably go to and say, hey, go throw some gas at 94 and get me this one hitter. And he, it's, he's a, it would be a specialized role, but I think he can do that. And that's encouraging for, for Storrs. 
Uh, Cam Sanders threw a perfect inning as well, as did Austin Bain. No, Bain walked a guy. Uh, they shortened the game to seven innings. It was a, a run rule. The coaches agreed to it uh, when it was 13-3. They, they agreed to the run rule uh, when it got out of hand, so it ended in seven. So uh, that takes care, care of the mound. Offensively, when you score 13 runs, it was a good night. 13 runs and 14 hits for LSU. Um, the story offensively, for me, it's twofold. Number one is Daniel Cabrera. And you're starting to see now the the hype and the promise come to fruition he you know his contributions early this year were was that he was so patient and he was he was drawing a lot of walks uh, but he's had big hits now he had the big hit against Tennessee the walk off against Tennessee on on Sunday in that series uh he he, he batted 500 this weekend against Arkansas and all he did last night was go three for three with two runs scored four RBI and he also had a walk for good measure. He had a three-run bomb in the second uh, to right field, which was a no-doubter. The The knock on Cabrera early was he was really struggling to hit lefties and he was striking out too much. Well, the strikeout numbers have come way down, and you're starting to see the power come, and you're also starting to see him hit lefties. Cabrera batted clean up, and I think you're going to leave him there because he's got that pop, and... You know, that was his sixth homer of the year, and you know that that one could leave the yard on any swing from Cabrera. Like, he's that guy on your team. And when he's seeing it well, he's a dangerous guy hitting in the middle of the lineup. And the other thing that I really like is the way Maneri positioned the lineup. He had Austin Bain in front of Cabrera, and he has Watson after him. So you know Watson is a really good hitter, although he's had his struggles at times this year, but he's still batting three thirty one. And Bain has been a doubles machine. So if you have that in the middle of your lineup, if you go Bo Jordan, Antoine Duplantis, then Bain, Cabrera, Watson, then all of a sudden pitchers are going to have to decide, okay, who do I want to deal with? And you know, Bain keeps blasting doubles. If you want to throw him a fastball, good luck. You know, Watson can leave the yard at any point. So if you decide you want to pitch to Cabrera, good luck. Or if you don't want to pitch to Cabrera, well, then you're going to have to go throw Watson a strike. So, you know... There's a lot to like about the middle of that lineup right now. And it's one of the things we talked about yesterday in this game is that LSU's seen its offensive production over the last eight games increase by two runs per game over its season average. So they were averaging about four runs a game. It's up to like 5.8. So you've seen the offense come alive here in the last two weeks. Let's see if they can continue it for the next two weeks. If they can, then all of a sudden you know, you're playing your best baseball going into June, which is obviously what you want to do and it's kind of a staple of these Maneri teams I'm not trying to guys I'm not trying to overhype a, a midweek win over over McNeese uh, but you look for things that are good signs and some of these things have been struggles even in midweek games so there there was actually a lot to like and he, you look Jake Slaughter got the start at third and he went two for four last night with two runs scored so you're starting to get production one through nine Hunter Fiducia came up with a huge two out hit um, uh, y- yesterday as well which was great to see so um it's it's uh, kind of coming together a little for this team, and, and they're playing their best baseball right now, and they've got the worst team in the SEC coming in this weekend. So, uh, you know, make your move. All right, uh, one more thing I want to talk about before we get out of here, and that uh, it's, it's something that's near and dear to many of your hearts. For all of you degenerates, I'd love to talk about uh, gambling, a daily fantasy to be, to be precise. Um, I, I don't know where you stand on this or where you play. If you've listened to my radio show for any length of time, I don't do fantasy football. I'm probably the last like red-blooded American human that does not play fantasy football. Uh, but DraftKings, FanDuel, the daily fantasy sites, like two years ago, you could not watch an NFL game without seeing those ads in every single spot block. Well, then what, ha- what happened, of course, were all these states started blocking it as sports game, as gaming. And 19 states have legalized it now, and Louisiana is on the cusp of becoming number 20. And I, I say this not because I have any interest in it, but I'm sure many of you care about daily fantasy, and some of you like to gamble as well. And this is not in any way a political commentary because I don't care about politics. I don't follow politics, and I, if you do, good. Go get your news and yell at people on message boards or talk radio, fine. But I'm sure my audience cares about this. Uh, the House of Representatives uh, passed, I'm sorry, the Senate uh, voted 21 to 15 for the proposal on Wednesday after the House approved it 
last month. So now all that remains is the governor to sign this bill into law. And then if it's signed by the governor, it goes to individual communities throughout the state for a vote. So you will have the, the opportunity to vote if you want it, which I'm assuming this will pass overwhelmingly if it's given to the, the electorate. People are going to go out and they'll, they'll vote for this. And uh, look, in a, in a very practical sense, it's, a long, it's still a ways to go. So if Senate approved it, House approved it, if the governor signs it, it goes to you for a vote. If you approve it, then next legislative session, they have, the legislature has to determine how to regulate and tax all of these games. So sometimes, like for example, um, uh, certain money for you know sin taxes or whatever is allocated to specific causes. So like you know, video poker money might be allocated for education. So they, they'll have to decide this in 2019. But bottom line is, daily fantasy looks like it's getting closer to a reality. Looks like it's going to be a reality in our state at this point because the heavy lifting is over. Getting it through the House and through the Senate is done. The governor will sign it. I'm sure the people of the state will will vote for it. And then it's just a matter of, of figuring out how they're going to tax it. I love the idea. Um, let people spend their money how they want. Let people have fun if they want to play daily fantasy and make money for our state to pay for roads and education and all that stuff. Fine. Instead of just taking my money out of my paycheck, let people play fantasy and put a tax on